welcome to my channel. My name is Hello Alice. I make art videos, and today I'm going to be doing a challenge video. So, woo! So, the challenge video that I'm going to be doing today is the one marker challenge. It's pretty much exactly what it sounds like you pick out one marker, and then you make a whole painting with it. Drawing, painting, drawing, drawing with it. So, that's what we're going to be doing today, so hopefully you guys are excited. I'm excited. Before I go ahead and pick the marker, let me just tell you how I'm going to do it. So this is my marker storage space, I guess. Um, case, that's the right word, case. Uh, for those of you that are curious, this is an old Coca-Cola crate um, that used to hold Coca-Cola bottles that I got it at like a vintage store. And then I added on these little feet so that it tilts backwards and the markers don't fall out. So. As you can see, everything is organized by color, which would make it a little bit too easy for me to bias it and choose like my favorite color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blindfold myself. We're going to pick one marker out of each of these little sections, and then we're going to put all those markers into like a bowl or something and pick one marker from those markers. So that's how we're going to do it. I am going to be excluding gray, because here's the thing, gray is not a fun color. It is boring. It is most of my grays are quite light, so yeah, we're going to be excluding gray. Sorry. <laughs> so all of my grays I'm going to take out so that we don't pick those. And I'm also going to take out black. So we're going to go ahead and pick out those markers, so let's get started. Okay, so I have this lovely scarf that I'm going to use to blindfold. Hopefully I don't screw up my uh, <laughs> hair and makeup terribly. Okay, so I am all blindfolded up and let's go ahead and pick out some markers. So this is our initial selection of markers. I'm going to go ahead and grab a bowl and we're going to go ahead and pick one marker out of these 17. Okay, so I have my bowl and I'm throw the markers in there. Pull that blindfold back down and we're going to pick out the final marker. These are around. And let's go with this guy. Oh, that's a pro marker. All right, so we're going with the Forest Green Windsor and Newton Pro Marker. So I'm gonna go ahead, get it set up, and we're gonna make some art. Okay, guys, so um, I kind of decided to start out this video with a little bit of my sketching and brainstorming process. I had picked green, so I decided I wanted to go with something that was like plant-based. Um, and I also wanted to incorporate a figure because I didn't want it to be like a cop-out, like I got green and I drew plants, you know what I mean? Um, so I am just kind of brainstorming here, playing out with thumbnails and that kind of thing, and then trying to figure out how I'm going to use the marker most effectively to get the most depth and variety of colors and things like that, and where I'm going to use the white of the paper and negative space and all that good stuff. Um, before I get too far into this, it's time for my challenge disclaimer, which is the rules of this challenge are to use one marker to create a, a picture. That is the rule of this challenge. So if you feel that I cheated because I drew the picture after I chose the marker because I used techniques including rubbing alcohol, then that's fine. But 
there's always those people that feel like they need to police the rules of these challenges. And it's like, you didn't make the challenge, so it's going to be okay. Um, this is how I chose to interpret the challenge. Um, everyone's free to do it the way they want to do it, as long as they're following the basic rule, which is use one marker, um, which is what I did. So yeah, um, now that's out of the way. So I didn't record the inking and sketching process of this. Um, so we jumped straight into the coloring and I started out by uh, basically mapping out where all of the like kind of fern plant type things were gonna go on the background. And the reason I did this was because I wanted these to be darker than the background. So by coloring them in first, then I could put a second layer of marker over the top and that would make them darker. And then uh, right now I'm outlining the bottom half. And one of the things I really wanted to do in this piece was use negative space as effectively as I could. So in the bottom half of the painting, I used the white of the paper to create the like plants. And in the top half, I used, you know, marker and I used white of the paper to do like, um, what is it? Veins and things like that. So yeah, uh, this is just filling everything in. This is a pro marker that I got, um, which means it doesn't have a brush nib. It has a chisel nib and a bullet nib. The bullet nib was definitely super useful during this challenge. The chisel nib was a lot harder to work with. I'm really not a fan of chisel nibs. So right now I'm playing around with some rubbing alcohol and trying to figure out some techniques with that. And one thing that came to my mind as I was playing with the rubbing alcohol was I had just seen Bailey J's Sharpie challenge. And in her Sharpie challenge, she took rubbing alcohol and she mixed it with the marker and applied it with a brush to create a lighter color. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a good idea. I can totally do that here. So I took a brush and rubbing alcohol and I mixed it with the marker to create a lighter color. And it worked really, really well. So that was a really, really fun technique to use. Um, and I'm really happy that Bailey discovered it. <laughs> um, and I still am just using that one marker. You know, rubbing alcohol is a medium. So <laughs> anyway, the other thing I use the rubbing alcohol for is I actually dropped it onto the background to create those dots. Um, I really wanted to play around with texture in this piece because I was so limited in my color options. Texture is a really good way to go. Plus the rubbing alcohol helps separate the colors in the marker. And since it's green, it separates into more of a blue and yellow, which really adds some interest. I'm also using pure rubbing alcohol to help lift some of the color in the darker areas to create highlights like on her hair. Um, so I really tried to use my tools effectively. Um, I like to approach challenges like this as I am a poor artist and I only have one marker. Um, I can only afford one Copic marker. So what can I do with that? I really like to push the limits of the medium. So that's why I use a lot of like rubbing alcohol and all that good stuff because I'm thinking if you have one marker, what is the most effective way to use it? Like how can you get the most variety out of this one marker? Um, so rubbing alcohol really, really helped with that. So now I'm just going through and darkening the ferns again. This part was so tedious. It took so long to just go in and try to get them as dark as I wanted. And I still didn't get them as like as dark dark as I wanted. I really wanted them dark, but there was only so much ink the paper would hold. Um, but you know, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think that the texture of the bubble kind of background really helped give it some good contrast as well. Um, I also kind of lost a lot of my negative space in terms of like the veins of the plants in this kind of section. Um, especially when I did the bubbles, it kind of blended into the white a little bit. So I had to fix that. Um, then I went through with these little dots and I put all these little dots in the background. Um, again, just trying to create texture and visual interest and different shades and tones with the green marker. Um, just so that this was a visually interesting piece. It is really hard when you just have one color, one marker, not even one color, like one color would be fine, but one marker, you only have so many shades, you can only get so dark, you can only get so light. So yeah, um, adding in more dark for the hair. Uh, yeah, I when I was thinking about this, I knew I really wanted to do succulents. And so I'm going in right now with the succulents on the bottom and oh my gosh, was this one of the hardest parts. Um, I wanted stylized plants. I wanted stylized plants from the beginning, but the succulents were so small and fiddly. It was so hard to do, even with the bullet nib just wasn't fine enough. Um, and then I was going in with the brush a little bit later because I had so many succulents that I really needed color, for, like 
value variety in there, um, like the light and the dark, so that they would stand out against each other. Otherwise, it would just look like one green bush. Um, so if you don't have color, trying to add variety in your shades, like your values, is really, really helpful. <laughs> so yeah, this was definitely a really fun challenge. I, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought. I'm actually really happy I got green. Um, green is not one of my favorite colors. I was really secretly hoping for like blue or purple or pink. Um, green is not one of my favorite colors at all, but I had so much fun with this. I live streamed um, the entire painting and it was just a really, really good time and it was really technically challenging for me. I mean, the drawing itself I kept pretty simple and stylized because that's a look I'm really interested in, especially like stylized plants. But um, trying to come up with different techniques was uh, definitely interesting and um, I really liked the kind of painting on the marker technique, which again, I cannot take credit for. That was totally Bailey J's idea. Um, so props to her, but I actually liked the technique so much that I might try to use it in a more finished piece, like an actual, like painting without the restrictions of just one marker. Um, I'm a watercolorist primarily, so it actually felt really natural to me. And I really loved the like soft look and the way the marker kind of breaks down in unexpected ways. I think it could be used in a really, really interesting manner. So I really liked that. So now I'm just erasing the last pencil marks from between the white and um, I'm going in with some white gouache and just brightening up those white areas. Um, there were a couple parts that I ended up accidentally drawing over. I prefer to use white gouache over white gel pens at this point. I think it's much um, easier to control and it's more opaque and I just prefer it over a white gel pen. I think white gel pens are good for when you're traveling or doing something quick, but if I'm at home, I would much rather use white gouache to add in my white highlights. I also added in some white kind of splatter and some specks on the background as well, uh, just to add some more white and some lightness up to the top half of the painting. I say painting, it's a drawing. <laughs> um, so yeah, and this definitely helped cleaning up the succulents as well. That was something that was useful. <laughs> Oh, and in case anyone's wondering, I'm using the lid of my candle for the palette for this whole thing. It was there and it seemed like an easy thing to use. So yeah, this was a really fun challenge. If you haven't tried it out yourself, I definitely encourage you to try it. I hope that you guys liked it. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. And I'm really, I'm just, I, I am, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think, I, I don't know, I I like it. So let me know if you guys like it. Let me know what you thought of this challenge. If you have ever done any one marker challenges or anything like that. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. And as always, have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye.